Hi there, and in this video I will show you how to make an underwater breathing device that will give you around two full breaths. It might not be too much for you, but for an inexperienced freediver, that's like at least one or two full minutes. So this is going to be a bit of a long video, so lay back, grab a drink, and I'll hope that you will enjoy. So now let us see what are the items that we are going to need. First up, we are going to need some copper tubing, and we are going to need 8 cm of 10 mm copper tubing. Although I used 8 mm copper tubing, you should use 10 mm copper tubing, so that they fit together, and you have a nice seal. You're also going to need 4 cm of 13 and 16 mm copper tubing. Also know that you could also use stainless steel copper tubing. You are also going to need an old chin guard, but you could also use reusable cable ties to strap it to your hand. Some 16 and 10 mm heat shrink tubing, one 20 mm metal water pipe valve, two 20 mm pipe nipples, one large and two small hose clamps. Know that these should fit the vinyl tubing that I'm going to tell you in a second. One snorkel breathing attachment. This is optional because you could just stick the pipe directly in your mouth. One replacement new car tire valve. Around 1 milliliter of non-toxic oil. One small plastic bottle. Make sure that it is hard plastic and not water bottles as they are very thin and can rupture with the air pressure. Around 75 centimeters of 20 millimeter vinyl tubing, this should fit over the pipe nipples. And finally, one meter of 10 millimeter vinyl tubing. So with the item said, let's see what are the tools that we are going to need. We are going to need a lighter or a heat source, a tape measure or a ruler, a permanent marker, a metal pipe cutter, a small piece of rough sandpaper, some steel wool, super glue, but epoxy is better and I used epoxy as it is much stronger, about 1 meter of 20 millimeter solder, a soldering iron, hot glue gun and one small stick of hot glue gun, a drill, 8 millimeter and 10 millimeter drill bits, needle nose pliers and a file or a bench grinder is better so the first thing that I'm going to do I'm going to put everything aside so the first thing that you want to do is just grab the bottle that you are going to use and take off the cap after that grab the 8mm bit and lock it into your drill And then drill a hole and try to precisely drill it in the middle, so that the epoxy is in the place well. Also, I'm using a piece of wood, so that I don't drill the bench top. After you drill the hole, what you are going to need is to cut 4 cm of the 10 mm copper tubing. After you have cut it, grab some needle nose pliers and open it up from one side of the copper tubing. Do like what I'm doing now. This is done so that when we insert it into the cap, it makes a really tight seal. After you've done that, grab the piece of copper tube that we cut and insert it from one side that we cut it from not from the side that we opened it with the pliers. This is a very important step so that it makes a good seal. I've done it to show you, don't do this step for now. Now what we are going to need to do is to mix up some epoxy. Also, before you apply the epoxy, grab some rough sandpaper and sand down the upper part of the cap. So now what you are going to need to do is just to apply the epoxy and spread it around the pipe and the cap but only do this on one side at a time or it will drip I gave mine around 5 minutes to settle from one side 
and then did the other. Also, make sure that when you put the epoxy in the inner part, there is like a ring shape, and only put the epoxy there, or then the cap won't close. Also, make sure to not pour any down the tube. Then, when you're done, put it aside to dry throughout the process. Now, we are going to make the hole for the car tire valve. You could reuse one, but that's going to be a bit tricky. So, as you can see, the drill bit slides off the bottle when you try to drill a hole into it from the downside. So, what I did was grab the soldering iron when it was hot and made a hole in the bottom. Try to make the hole in the middle as there is the strongest part. Now, after we drilled the hole, I grabbed the 8mm copper tubing and it actually was conveniently the same size as the inner part of the valve. And then I passed it through the hole, as you can see here. After that, I placed the valve in a vise with a cloth so that I don't damage the valve. And with a little bit of non-toxic oil and pulling on to the bottle, it passed into the hole. Also, make sure to oil the valve up before you insert it. Okay, so now that we are ready from the bottle part, let us get to the valve part, which is the most important part, because it is where the pressure will be most. So we must be very careful doing this part to make no mistakes and to be completely airtight. So the first thing, switch on the soldering iron. Then what are we going to need to do is to cut 4 cm pieces which are from 10 mm, 13 mm and 16 mm copper tubes. And when we cut them we are going to need to polish them with steel wool so that the solder holds on well. Also you are going to need to open up one side with the pliers like we did with the first one. So let me just do all of that. So these are the two pieces that I cut, but I will cut the small and last one after I solder these two. So now we are going to try to hammer the 16mm piece into one of the pipe nipples. And if it doesn't want to get hammered in, you just have to do like me. And what I did, I just filed and grinded a part of the end so that it could get in and so that I could solder it into the pipe nipple. So now I'm just going to solder the 13 and 16 mm parts. Also, I skipped the soldering part as I didn't have much storage left and it took me around 20 minutes to solder these two parts. And as you can see, this is how the two parts look after they have been soldered. So now what I'm going to do is solder the small part. Mine was a bit tricky as the copper pipe was 8 mm and not 10 mm. Don't do this mistake that I did as it will be tricky to get it into the pipe. Also, because the tube was smaller than intended, I had to cut from the sides of the 13 mm copper tube and cramp the 8 mm copper tube and then solder it. Yours should be fine as they get into each other as it is 10 mm and not 8 mm. Also, you should insert the tubes accordingly to where you opened it up with the pliers.
So this is the final look of our attachment that we made as this will connect our hose to our air supply tank. So now grab the file and if there are any sharp edges, file them so that they won't puncture the heat shrink tubing. So now after I file the sharp solder, I grabbed around 6 cm of the 16 mm heat shrink tubing, although the length may differ a bit, and then placed it over the 13 and 16 mm copper tubes that we soldered. Also, I tried to put a little bit of heat shrink tubing over the pipe nipples, so that if there are any small leaks, it, they would get covered from the heat shrink tubing. Then, when I was done from putting over the attachment that we made, I placed it over a portable burner with some pliers. Then, when I was done, I cut the excess. So this is our final final look of our homemade attachment with the heat shrink tubing and now what are we going to need to do is put some plumbers teflon tape over the pipe nipple so that air won't leak and then screw it into our valve also it doesn't matter on which side you screw it in So now let us put everything aside and begin working on the breathing attachment. The first thing that you want to do is just grab the pipe with the large diameter and shove it into the pipe nipple halfway in. Then grab the large hose clamp and screw it in as tightly as you can. After you are done with that, grab the teflon tape and put some around the pipe nipple, where we are going to screw it into the valve. After you are done with that, screw it into the other side of the valve. We are now almost ready and what you have to do now is just to strap the attachment that we made to the top of the shin guard and I did that using reusable zip ties. After you are done, we just now have one more thing and some finishing touchings to do. Grab one small hose clamps and the other end of the 1 meter small diameter vinyl tubing and screw it in tightly to the end of the small copper tube on the attachment that we had soldered. Then, after the hose clamp was tightened securely, I had put the bottle in the inner part of the shin guard, where it was tightened securely with zip ties. After that the bottle was tightened securely, I grabbed the cap with the copper tube epoxied in place and reinforced it with hot glue. After the hot glue dried, I tightened the cap to the bottle. Then using the last small hose clamp and the other end of the small vinyl tubing, I tightened it to the cap. So that's all for this video, there is a lot more work to do on this project as it is still a prototype. Maybe I will upload then another design and if I'll do it will be in the description. Also in the description there will be all the things you need so you can write them from there. So, I really, really hope that you have enjoyed this video and helped you in the summer so that you can view the ocean a little bit longer and maybe even inspired you in a way or the other. But if you did like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. But if you didn't like this video, I really, really hope that you appreciated the work that I have put for this video of all this prototyping and research and everything that I put in this video. So I guess with all of that said, that's it for this video, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Anytime, if you have any questions, please tell me in the comments below. Stay safe and always have fun. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.